The Biden Supremacy Democrats tend to make up any rules or laws that suit their needs, and then they'll break any rule or law if it gets in the way of their power. So they'll tell us that people who wandered around the Senate building on January 6th were insurrectionists bent on the overthrow of our nation's institutions. But when Supreme Court Justices Holmes and Republicans Holmes somehow magically find their addresses on the lists of professional protesters sent by the Biden White House, that's an approved form of civil discourse. There's nothing wrong with that. The mantra is, my mind, my body, my freedom. Men, shut the F up. Stop abortion bans. My body belongs to me. No country for old men. Anti-choice is inhumane. Yet these are the same Democrats who meekly went along with Joe Biden firing every woman who refused to forcibly wear masks or wanted to keep their businesses open or get shots or booster shots. It was just a short time ago, last year, that Joe Biden said, Your body, Joe Biden's choice. And there were no exceptions. You couldn't even claim an ex a religious exemption because the old men of the Democratic Party said their power came first. Some supremacies are more useful to the agenda of the Democratic Party than others. He's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. A white person in Buffalo, New York, presented an opportunity for President Joe Biden to further divide America along racial lines. Let's listen in. Majority Leader, Sh Leader Schumer and Senator Gillibrand and Congressman Higgins and Gov, thank you for taking my call when I called. And I'll never forget what she said. I said, I'd like to maybe come up if it's okay. She said, this is a big Scranton. Come. Come. And I think you're doing a heck of a job. Thank you. Thank you for your heart as well as your head. Mayor Brown, you've been, uh, you, you've been wonderful. Thank you. And I know this is a lot of, when a vice presidential or a presidential chip shows up, it's, uh, there's all kinds of paraphernalia and people. And I know it's not easy. I want to thank your law enforcement officers for not just what they did in this crisis, but for accommodating us. And all the elected officials and law enforcement officers, first responders, and faith leaders that are here today. Jill and I have come uh, to stand with you. Now, why is it important for President Joe Biden to personally make a trip to Buffalo, New York? Because the killer is going to be charged with hate crimes. And Joe Biden delivers a speech where he claims this killer somehow acted with a group of other people. Jill and I bring you this message from deep in our nation's soul. In America, evil will not win, I promise you. Hate will not prevail, and white supremacy will not have the last word. For the evil did come to Buffalo. It has come to all too many places. Manifest in gunmen who massacred innocent people in the name of hateful and perverse ideology rooted in fear and racism. It's taken so much. Ten lives cut short in a grocery store. Three other wounded, three or three other wounded by a hate-filled individual who had driven 200 miles from Binghamton in the, that range to carry out a murderous, racist rampage that he would live stream, live stream to the world. What happened here is simple and straightforward: terrorism terrorism, domestic terrorism, violence inflicted in the service of hate and the vicious thirst for power that defines one group of people being inherently inferior to any other group, a hate that through the media and politics, the Internet, has radicalized, angry, alienated, lost, and isolated individuals into falsely believing that they will be replaced, that's the word, replaced by the other, 
by people who don't look like them and who are, therefore, in a perverse ideology that they possess and being fed lesser beings. I and all of you reject the lie. I call on all Americans to reject the lie. And I condemn those who spread the lie for power, political gain, and for profit. The speech actually manages to tie in a lone gunman with Donald Trump and people who voted for Donald Trump. We've now seen too many times the deadly and destructive violence this ideology unleashes. We heard the chants, you will not replace us in Charlottesville, Virginia. I wasn't going to run, as the senator knows, again for president. But when I saw those people coming out of the woods of the fields in, in Virginia, in Charlottesville, carrying torches, shouting, you will not replace us, accompanied by white supremacists and carrying Nazi banners, that's when I said, no. No. And I, honest to God, those who know me, Chuck, you know, I wasn't going to run for certain. But I was going to be darned if I was going to let anyway. So I'm going to get going. Look, we've seen the mass shootings in Charleston, South Carolina, El Paso, Texas, and Pittsburgh, last year in Atlanta, this week in Dallas, Texas, and now in Buffalo, in Buffalo, New York. White supremacy is a poison. It's a poison <laughs> running through our, it really is. Running through our body politic. And it's been allowed to fester and grow right in front of our eyes. No more. I mean, no more. We need to say as clearly and force as we can that the ideology of white supremacy has no place in America. None. This sort of connection by the president was not made on several other occasions. Earlier this month, New York City subway shooter Frank James shot up dozens of people in New York City. There was no presidential visit to speak out about his violence. Why was this? Frank James had numerous social media posts stating, Oh, black Jesus, please kill all the whiteies. And... This was clearly a hate crime by Frank James, but he won't be charged with a hate crime. There won't be any presidential visit blaming Donald Trump supporters or other people for the acts of uh, this lone gunman. No, he acted alone and there will be no hate crime charges because it doesn't serve Biden's supremacy agenda. We're all children of God. All life, liberty, our universal goods, gifts of God. We didn't get it from a government. We got it from because we exist. We we're called upon to defend them. The venom of the haters and their weapons of war, the violence and the words and deeds the, 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 that stalk our streets, our stores, our schools. This venom, this violence cannot be the story of our time. We cannot allow that to happen. When a black supremacist in Waukesha, Wisconsin, ran over people in a parade. He did so out of racial hatred. He was a black supremacist. The parade killer had a long criminal history and favored attacking women, especially if they were pregnant, such as here at a BP gas station. He struck a woman in the face and then ran over her with his car. The parade killer, Brooks, was charged with five counts of first-degree intentional homicide, but he will not be charged with a hate crime because it doesn't serve the Democratic Party's agenda and it doesn't serve President Joe Biden's agenda. Look, I'm not naive. I know tragedy will come again. It cannot be forever overcome. It cannot be fully understood either. But there are certain things we can do. We can keep assault weapons off our streets. We've done it before. I did it when I passed the crime bill last time. And violence went down. Shootings went down. We can't prevent people from being radicalized to violence. But we can address the relentless exploitation of the Internet to recruit and mobilize terrorism. We just need to have the courage to do that, to stand up. 
Yeah. Now, it's clear Joe Biden did not come up with this replacement theory narrative. Joe Biden didn't come up with anything in this speech. He was handed this speech to say by the people who run the White House because we didn't see any speech or personal appearance by Joe Biden during this New York City subway sh mass shooting. Why not? Why didn't this serve the Biden agenda of attacking hate speech online? This guy said he, he wanted to kill all the whiteys. Why didn't that meet, meet the standard of hate speech online? Oh, it didn't serve the Biden political agenda to get you to vote Democrat. Look, the American experiment in democracy is in a danger like it hasn't been in my lifetime. It's in danger this hour. Hate and fear are being given too much oxygen by those who pretend to love America, but who don't understand America. To confront the ideology of hate requires caring about all people, not making distinctions. Why didn't Biden speak out and go to Wisconsin about this horrible example of hate of a man running over an entire parade? Why was this considered something that wasn't the business of the government to make a public statement on? Because it didn't serve Biden's supremacy agenda. Some forms of supremacy are okay in America when they're expressed in terms that assist the Democratic Party's quest for power. Now I'd like to show you something that it actually kind of curdles my blood having to report this. This is Bishop Evans. He was killed on the southern border of the United States, specifically because President Joe Biden canceled Trump's border wall and Trump's border enforcement policies. This young man would have never been going through a river on America's southern border if not for the fact that President Joe Biden canceled the previous president's border policies. This young man died selflessly trying to help others that he thought were struggling as they swam across the river. His service is the heroism above and beyond the call of duty that we appreciate out of all American military forces. This happened on April 25th. Do you remember President Joe Biden flying to this young man's hometown to make a speech about his selfless sacrifice? Do you remember Joe Biden flying to the American southern border or to Texas to make a speech about this young man's sacrifice? No. Why not? Because it didn't fit the political agenda of Biden's team of soulless political hacks who look for any crisis to exploit that they can use to expand the power of the Democratic Party. This young man's death, because of Joe Biden's policies, did not serve any narrative of Joe Biden, any narrative of the Biden White House, any narrative of the Democratic Party, and especially not any narrative of the major news outlets covering Joe Biden's policies. So this story died a quiet death, just like the New York City subway shooter story died a quiet death as a local news story, not a national imperative. When a white person shoots up a town like in Buffalo, New York, that's a national news story. That's hateful rhetoric online. But there's no hateful rhetoric online when it comes to a local news story of a New York City subway shooter. That's not a national news story. The Kenosha parade is not a national news story. These always stay as local news stories because local news isn't Joe Biden's fault. And it's the same with this young man's death. And, I, and again, I, I really hate putting him in my video here because I don't want to say this young man died because of Joe Biden, but this young man died because of Joe Biden. And no one in the Biden team had any remorse for their policies. They're all just cackling like Kamala Harris about the open border our country has right now in 2022. You know, if this had happened under Donald Trump, every news outlet would be personally editorializing that President Donald Trump personally caused the death of this young soldier. But since the media narrative has now flipped 180 degrees, they will never, ever blame Joe Biden for this. And maybe they shouldn't. But why is it that Joe Biden and his handlers just leapt at the opportunity to see a way to divide white Americans against black Americans over this shooter. They didn't do it with this one. They didn't do it with this one. What's the difference? The difference is Democrats want power 
and they want the money that comes with that power. And that is the only reason that you'll see Biden's phony, fake tears of outrage. He didn't have any tears for the victims of this guy in New York City. Biden didn't have any tears for the victims of this parade killer. And I'm not saying that these two killers are in any way worse or better than this white killer here. That's the whole point. All of America grieves when these crimes happen. The difference is we now have a political team in the White House and in Washington, D.C., who enjoy killings like this. They feel ecstasy. They feel joy because this will help them pass the legislation they want. These people are sick and evil. And I'm not just talking about supremacist killers. Thank you. Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. Cause I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black, and you ain't black, and you ain't black, and you ain't black, and you ain't black.